All right, what's up? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about seven signs God has blessed you with a gift of discernment. Um, I'm going to be doing more live streams too as well. I don't really do live streams much on this channel, but I'm going to start mixing it up, doing more live streams. Um, also, I could be able to, you know, reply to your comments and see what's your feedback too as well. So we're going to be getting here. Um, if you guys already, you guys already know what to do to help the algorithm of this video to get reach more people, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it on all social media platforms, man. This one's going to be very key, especially for all you people who are seeking God, uh, building up your spirit. This is what you're going to start to see more, man, the gift of discernment. This is much needed in these last days where evil is increasing. A lot of deceivers out here, um, you know, have many videos on, uh, you know, certain uh, topics, certain people too. Uh, that are being used by the devil to deceive people, the antichrist spirit. So the sermon is one of the most important things. Um, one of the first things that God gave me when I first started walking the narrow path, the straight and narrow, it was the sermon. So it's very key. It's a very important video to talk about. And um, let's go. What's up, Jalen Brown? What's up, bro? What's up, Tommy Ray? Love from Alabama. Okay, shout out to Alabama. Uh, what's up, Brayley? Good. She says, I'm reading the Bible, so I'll watch it later. Okay, that's what's up. Enjoy your session. Uh, what's up, Circo? What's up, Path of the Narrow? What's up, is it Lel from Illinois, in, uh, Indiana? That's what's up. Uh, Y'all get the likes up. Yeah, get the likes up. Thank you, bro. Uh, the Narrow Path, what's up, bro? Where's that dope room you had set up at Big Dog with the Mark the Mission sign? Oh, it's right here. It's right in front of, that's my uh, computer desk. Um, yeah, it's, it's so, I still got that. I, I'm gonna start making live streams on my desk, too. I haven't, I haven't done a live stream on my desk in like a month, man. It's been a minute. Um, what's up, Adriana? What's up, Moses? What's up, Xavier? What's up, Courtney? What's up, Bradley? What's up, Deshaun? What's up, Patrick? What's up? Man, y'all in here, man. That's what's up. Blessings, blessings. So, man, this is going to be a very important video, guys. I was going to make this like an actual video, but I was like, I haven't, done a lot. I haven't been doing live streams at all like that, so I'm going to start doing more live streams lately. So, the first signs, you guys, you'll see when you have the gift of discernment is you're going to start to experience experience an increase of knowledge and wisdom okay so when your discernment is increasing you're going to start to see an increase of knowledge and of wisdom and what does the bible say what comes with knowledge and wisdom okay it talks about this in Ecclesiastics 1, well, let me make sure it's that one. I think it's verse 8 to 10. Let me double check real quick. Okay, oh, uh, actually, no, 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 it's in, oh, good thing I didn't say that. So it's in, it's in chapter 1, verse 8, 17 to 18, right? I always get those confused, okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, Ecclesiastics chapter uh, chapter seven or chapter one verse seventeen to eighteen. Okay, so it says, remember when you get discernment. Remember that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so God gives you discernment. Okay, it's through the Holy Spirit. So this is why it's very important to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. So you you will experience an increase of knowledge and wisdom, and with much knowledge and wisdom, this is what Solomon says. Remember Solomon was was. Uh, blessed by God to receive more wisdom than anybody else on earth. Okay, so it says, And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly, and to perceive that this is also a vexation of spirit, for much wisdom is much grief, and he that increased in knowledge increased sorrow. Okay, so guys, it's very painful. It's very painful when you have discernment. It's like a ble it's a blessing, but it's, it's sometimes it can feel like a curse because you can see into the things that many people, most people in this world can't see. And the reason why it feels like a curse is because they look at you crazy and weird. They look at you like something's wrong with you because God has blessed you with eyes to see. He's blessed with the eyes to see and ears to hear, so it could feel like a curse. And when you're of the small set apart people, you know, you could actually see what's really going on and everyone else feels like they're you just like kind of like in the movie, The Matrix, where Neo was waking up. Y'all remember that scene where he's waking up out of the um, the water uh, like um, he's waking up out of the water, kind of like he was getting baptized. Remember, that movie is very spiritual. It's very uh, there's symbolism behind it, not in a demonic way, but like it's it, 
it's it's pretty much like a documentary, okay? But he's getting up out of water as a symbolism of him getting baptized, and he looks around him, and everybody is still asleep. Everybody, everybody is still stuck in the matrix. So, and that's kind of how it is when God gives his sermon. Like, I still never forget this when I first got the sermon, and I started to tell everybody because I thought, like, you know, like people would, you know, would want to learn. It's all good if they didn't know because there was a time where I didn't know. But I, you would think that people, your friends, your family, uh, the relationships y'all are in, maybe you might think that they would want to know. They don't. <laughs> and that's why it could kind of feel like a curse, you know. So through much wisdom. So when God's giving you discernment, you're going to increase knowledge and wisdom. But you're also going to increase, you know, I got to give you guys the balance of it, the truth. You're also going to increase sorrow, okay. You're also going to increase grief because you're grieving over the fact that many people are still asleep. Many people are still stuck in the matrix, okay? And many people choose to stay in the matrix. Now, it's one thing for you not to know because no one has gave the information, uh, you know, but there are people, guys, out in the world, there's a lot of people, guys. You'll be surprised. God woke them up before uh, God woke you up, okay? God, they knew about the straight and narrow before you did, but they just chose the other path. There's a lot of people out here that God, I'm telling you, everybody in this world, well, I won't say everybody, but I want to say a majority of people after 25 years old, they they knew they knew the truth of God. Okay. Uh, now of course there's levels to it, but they knew the path they were they were supposed to walk, but they rejected the path. Okay, I'm telling y'all, man, people are without excuse in the day of judgment. People are gonna be without excuse, man. After 25 years old, because remember God's full of grace and mercy, but you know, at a certain age, it's like, bruh, what are you what are you doing? You know, someone says many are called, fear are chosen. Yep. So many are called. Many people know to walk the path of righteousness. Okay. Many people know God's truth. Many people know. Okay. That's what it calls. Many are called, but only few are chosen. Only few. A lot of y'all in the in the comment section. Only few of y'all are able to, you know, wanting to sacrifice, have discipline. Okay. Not choosing your friends and families, your loved ones over in Christ. Okay. Uh, not choosing to live in sin sin rebellion disobedience there's only a small percent of y'all who are like all right you know i'm tired of sinning against the most High. i'm tired of rebelling against god uh, i'm tired of serving my flesh and not my spirit and and i'm done with the world and i'm, I'm walking this trade and narrow there's only a few people that's why only few are chosen okay so you're going to experience the grief you're going to experience guys i'm telling you y'all have to know this man Y'all have to know this. It's a lot of people out in this world. And this is what God showed me a couple months ago. But a lot of people, you know, we all see out in this world, they, they know some of the things that you know. The things that you, you wouldn't expect most people to know, they know. I'm telling y'all, bro. Many of them know. From your parents, from your cousins, your brothers, uh, the, the man or woman y'all be talking to, they know, bro. They know, they know, they know. And a lot of these people... They have been given over to a reprobated mind. So that's why when you start to speak a little bit of stuff like that, you start to see the spirits, the demons in them get triggered, get bothered. Because they they knew, they knew the path. It is very, very disheartening. That's why I said, guys, discernment, sorrow and grief. Because for when you know, it's just, sometimes, guys, like there's a saying that ignorance is a bliss. And that's true and it's kind of not true because to be ignorant you know, that could lead you to death without even you knowing just because, you know, you're on the wrong path ignorantly. But, you know, so there's like some truth to that, but there's a little bit not true to that. I don't really, I don't really believe in that. But it is kind of true though. I'm not going to say it's not, okay? They will accuse you of having a demon. Yeah, the delusion is real. Yeah, a lot of these people out here, guys, they're giving over a strong delusion, okay? Were they giving over to a strong delusion just because they didn't know the truth? No, they were giving over to a strong delusion because they rejected the truth. So I mean, as God showed them, there, guys, people are going to be without excuse on the day of judgment, bro. I'm telling y'all, man, a lot of people are going to be without excuse. And God showed me that, you know, a couple months ago and it opened my eyes. I'm like, wow. You know, and I'm going to go over that too, which correlates to what I'm talking about. I think that's going to be number number six or so one of the other parts. But next one, let's go over number two, okay? So number one, for those who are just not joining, was you to get increase of knowledge and wisdom, okay? And also it's going to come with sorrow and grief. And I explained, I broke that down pr pretty well, guys. Okay. Um, just knowing that the people around you are still asleep. And most of them, like I said, we were all once asleep. But when you're when you're still asleep and you're choosing to stay asleep and people are instructing you or, you know, giving you truth and knowledge, 
when the Holy Spirit is working through the individual to speak to somebody and they reject it or they kind of push it away, it kind of bring grief because it's like, dang, like life without God in this world, guys, is completely, it's a waste. What a waste of life, you know? What a waste of life, man. But um, yeah, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm gonna shout you out. Uh, Cher Cherise, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Peace and blessings to you, brother Mark. All praise on the most side. Thank you so much. Peace and blessings to you too. All right, number two. All right, let's go over number two. Number two is, oh, this is so true. This is so true. All right, hold on. You. Man, my spelling is trash, guys. <laughs> My spelling is terrible, bro. Oh my goodness. All right. You're going to listen to something before anyone else. Okay. So the number two sign that God is blessing with discernment is that you are able, you are able to sense something wrong before anybody else. Okay. And this goes for um, the people around you. Um, you know, just the things going on in your life. You know, y'all know. Okay. You're able to sense something wrong before. You know, and, you know, some people will say it's the intuition. And, yeah, it could be part of the intuition. God has gave, gave everybody intuition. But when you have the gift of discernment, you, you spot it first before anybody else. Okay, you'll see, you'll see the corruption coming. You'll, dis, you'll see the evil coming before anybody else. Okay, and it even reminds me, back in 2020, or was it? Yeah, 2020, uh, God showed me... Um, you know how they were pushing out, you know, the word that you can't say on social media no more. Uh, let's just say I will just do this, what I usually do. Okay, I'm going to just do that. Hopefully you all know what I'm talking about. Don't leave that in the comments too because it might trigger something. So uh, speak in code. All right. So when I was talking about, I was talking about this before it even came out. Okay. Um, I was saying that, I was speaking on the video. I actually got banned on YouTube. Uh, believe it or not, I got banned on YouTube, guys, because I will talk about, oh, what's up, new breed? I got banned on YouTube because I was um, talking about this before it came out and I was warning people, okay? I was telling people, you know, the, the dangers that come with it. And, you know, God showed me that before it even took place. And I got persecuted, you know, banned, shadow banned and all that. And um, come to pass, you know, think about it, like maybe like a year later, uh, it, it enrolled out and, you know, we're seeing people drop like flies, even young people, young athletes and stuff like that. And God showed me before it took place, you know, before the mark of the beast comes. Okay. Let me let you guys know something before the mark of the beast comes, God's going to show you before it comes out. He's going to let you know as well before it comes out. So you don't get it. He'll let you know months in advance. Okay. He'll let you know before it comes too. now people want to believe that this is, I, I don't believe that's the mark. Uh, because you're, we're so able to buy and sell. A lot of people got mad at me for saying that. Um, but I don't believe that is, I don't, you know, I didn't get it. And I'm not telling you to get it just because it's not made that very clear. But um, when it actually does come out, guys, God's going to show you. I mean, he, he's speaking through many of his sons and daughters. And I'm seeing many, many videos, many shorts of the Mark of the Beast programming. You know, I even uh, reacted to that too as well. So the Mark of the Beast programming, okay, is programming you to accept it slowly and surely, slowly and surely. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. God will always show you ahead of time. And uh, even if even if maybe like you're not at the level yet, because remember, guys, it's all levels to it. It's all levels to your understanding. It's all levels to wisdom. Okay, uh, your sp your spiritual connection to God. Okay, so maybe you're not be you might not be there yet. That's why God uses other people. Okay, it doesn't have to be a prophet or a messenger. God can use anybody. Even in the in the Bible, God used a donkey to speak to somebody. So God could use anybody. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. You're going to be able to set something wrong before anything else, okay? And this goes to anything in life. Even like, for instance, um, let's say you're sleeping next to the wrong person, okay? Uh, let's say in terms of like a relationship, okay? You're sleeping next to the wrong person and you maybe were not able to see it because one thing that what happens when you're with the wrong person, when you're with someone who sent like an agent in your life, um, and like you're new to the walk. Okay. A lot of the times, a lot of us guys, we, we dealt with the agent and we didn't know. Okay. And, and see, even though we dealt with the agent and we didn't know God gave us the signs, but you know, sometimes we're lonely, you know, things of that nature. Right. So, um, what would happen? Cause a lot of you guys, you're sleeping next to the enemy. A lot of you guys right now, there's people right now watching. Okay. Happy Saturday to you too. Uh, see Campbell, 
All right, there's a lot of people watching. Uh, sorry, watching. There's a lot of y'all, wa yeah, a lot of people watching that are, you know, sleeping next to the enemy. Okay, and you have no idea. Okay, and, uh, you know, you're going to start to, and let's say if you're, you're really genuine with your walk with God, because remember, the Bible says God tests, you know, uh, he tries the heart. So he really knows if you're really about it or if you're just playing church or just being religious, okay, which is like most people. Most people, guys, who, who claim they're of God, they're really just religious and play, playing double sides, you know, being double-minded, still being of the world, loving this world. Uh, when you're truly set apart, guys, this world is, is dead. <laughs> it's dead, bro. They're dying. This is a dying world, okay? But anyways, so you're going to start to notice God will give you the signs. And you're going to start to sense something, and God will see. You're going to, you'll give you signs, okay? You're going to start to see it, bro. Something's just not right. Something's not right. Now, you're not going to get this instantly like in the beginning. You know, like always, God, before you dealt with the agent, God will always let you know, you know, just like, you know, Samson and Delilah, okay? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, and I've said this many times, too, because it's so true. I'm pretty sure God gave Samson the signs, the, the, the you know, all, all the intuition, all the discernment you could think of before he dealt with Delilah. I guarantee you, bro, he chose to ignore. Look what happened to him. His eyes were plucked out. Okay, so, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen to, uh, to the people watching. Okay, so if God's giving you, you know, discernment, he's giving you uh, signs that, you know, you're dealing with the wrong person, cut them off like some scissors. I don't know where my scissors are at, but cut them off, man. Cut them off, all right? So that's number two. You're going to be able to sense something wrong before anybody else. All right, so number three. Number three is, okay, this, this is some real, this is real fire here. So as you. Y'all get the likes up too, if you guys can. There's uh, almost 800 people in here, only 300 likes. We gotta get the likes up. Gotta get the likes up, guys. It's free to like the video, okay? So as you continue to walk with God, your spiritual gifts, remember discernment is a spiritual gift. Now it's not only discernment too, the other gifts as well will increase, okay? And how do you, you know, people ask me this too, you know, how could I increase? Okay, so there's a Bible verse that says in John chapter three, wasn't even supposed to write this verse, but it just came up in my mind right now. Um, he must increase and I must decrease. So being humble, dying to yourself daily, okay? So this is how you're going to increase your spiritual gifts, not having the love of the world in you. Because anyone who has the love of the world in them, the love of God does not dwell in them. And that's something the church is, I don't remember the church is talking about that Bible verse, okay? Um, that's a really deep verse, man. If, who you know because everyone says God's love and you know love love this and that and I, you know that's true that is a Bible verse that says that but the Bible also says that if you love the world the love of God doesn't dwell in you okay so always keep that in mind also so he must increase I must increase being humble right also is your obedience okay this is how you show this is uh, my spelling oh my goodness my spelling is not good so this is how you show you love God guys. Okay, this is one of the ways, you know, giving to the people who are poor and homeless, that's also another way to show you love God. Because when you give to the poor, you're giving to God. All right, your obedience. Okay, this is how you show it. And you see, when, and you see, when you're being obedient, things start to increase. Okay, when you're being disobedient, things go downhill. And I know a lot of y'all have testimonies on that. So always keep that in mind. As you continue to walk with God, your spiritual gifts, not just discernment. Okay, now, yes, discernment is one of the gifts. And that talks about that too, guys, in Corinthians um, chapter 12. I believe it talks about all the spiritual gifts. Um, now, this is about discernment, so I'm not going to go over all that. But if you do want to check that out, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. As you continue to walk with God, the straight and narrow path, okay, your spiritual gifts will increase. It's all about being obedient, man. Being obedient to the Most High, uh, keeping God's commandments, Okay, today or tonight is going to be the Sabbath day. So, uh, you know, just honoring God's commandments, doing the best you can to your ability. Uh, and also, he must increase and we must decrease. Okay, so that means that you're denying yourself, you're denying your flesh daily, picking up your cross and building up your spirit. Okay, this is how you, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so 
And number one, for those who are just now joining, okay, you're going to experience an increase of wisdom and knowledge, which comes with sorrow and grief. I recommend if you guys are just now watching that, make sure you um, check that out because I went in, on, went in on number one. All right, number two is you are able to sense something wrong before anybody else. All right, and as you continue to walk with God, uh, your spiritual gifts will increase slowly and uh, slowly and slowly and slowly. Okay, I remember when I first started, you know, when God first called me, um, and I, you know, I, I I started to see the gifts, but looking back now, like I had, it was what it is now is, you know, not to boast of myself, but just, you know, obedience that you, you could do the same thing too. You're going to start to notice that you're leveling up. You're leveling up, man. And like I always tell y'all, um, every time you're about to level up, you're going to find yourself, your life getting harder. Um, you may be the attacks, the spiritual attacks, maybe the devil's mad. Uh, because the devil is jealous and envious, just like a lot of y'all have friends and you know so-called friends and family members in your life who are just jealous and envious of you. Okay, they don't really have the love agenda that you have for them. You know, just like how uh, Jesus had the love for uh, Judas, but did Judas match that love back? No, he didn't. Okay, a lot of people out here, guys, are snakes, devils, serpents, deceivers. I'm telling you, man, if only y'all had discernment, you could see what I'm talking about. And a lot of you guys know this. Okay. A lot of you guys know this, okay? So number four, number four is, oh, this is going to go on number three. Yes, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me, let me write this down real quick. All right, let me write this down real quick. Okay, so number four is when people have secret motives, hidden agendas, you will easily spot it, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people, guys, who came my way, who posed as a brother, uh, who posed as someone who really had love for your boy. They posed that, okay? And, you know, we talking here and there, but you really come to find out that they're just using you. Okay, if, it, if you ever have someone, guys, who only hits you up when they need something from you, that's a user. Okay, that's a leech. Okay, that's an energy vampire. Okay, you only have someone who only hits you up when, this, when it's beneficial to them. But you can never hit them up when, when, you, need, when you need something. But they could always hit you up when, when they need something. Okay, um, also, when, when someone gets what, when, when you're friends with an individual, right, y'all just became friends, right? Especially on, my, on, the, on these YouTube streets when I first got on YouTube. And, you know, people reach out to me all oh, I mean, back when I used to do live streams with other people. I'm like, oh, Mark, let's just do it live, blah, blah, you know, um, you know, just want to do lives with other people, you know, build connections, build friendships, a brotherhood, brotherhood, whatever the case is. Right. And we do videos and we do videos. You know, I go out of my way to do videos with them, blah, blah, uh, do live streams. And, you know, eventually you start to see the true color start to show after, you know, after a couple of weeks. It's because they already got everything they could off of you. Okay, now there's no, they, they don't need you no more. So now you start to see the true colors start to show. I'm telling y'all, bro. I'm telling you. And that, that's just, that's just, that's just with the YouTube side of it. So I mean, this, a lot of y'all can relate to this. When people already get everything they can get from you, there's no longer any use for you. And that's kind of how, the, that's kind of how Satan is, guys. When someone sells their soul to the devil, and maybe that person has fell off, or maybe that person is just no use for Satan's kingdom. Satan has no use for them anymore, so he just throws them away. He has no need for them. That's kind of how Satan's children are too as well. Okay? They come your life, they get everything they can from you, and they take from you. And they don't, even, they don't give it, just take, 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 and they just leave you stranded to dry with nothing. That's, that's, how, that's how the devil is. That's how his children are. I'm telling y'all, bro. Oh, my goodness, man. The hidden agendas. The secret motives. You're going to be able to spot it out, man. They're going to be able to spot it out. And there's nothing that hurts more than getting backstabbed. Nothing that hurts more than getting betrayed by someone who you trusted. Someone who you ate bread with, broke bread with. Someone who you just had genuine love for. It doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be a friend too. Okay, there's a Bible verse I want to go over. It's in the book of Psalms. I think this is um, David speaking. I think, yeah, let's see. Okay, this is in uh, Psalms chapter 41. Let me write that down. Psalms 
40 or yeah, 41 verse 9. Okay, this is David speaking. And also Christ referenced this verse to it in the New Testament as well. It says, Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Okay, this is what happened with Judas and, and, and Christ, right? So, yea, my own familiar friend, someone who you, someone whom I trusted. So someone who you trust. And see, the thing about trust, right? It takes trust is something that it takes seconds, it takes when you when you when you when you trust an individual, right? It's pretty much like you're giving them your heart, kind of in a way, because when they betray you, it, it very hurts, and it takes seconds to gain. You know, to, to to get someone's trust, it takes just seconds, but to to lose it, it's gone. Okay, it's gone, man. So, yay, yeah, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted. Okay, someone who you trust, which did eat of my bread. So you know, someone you break bread with have lifted up his heel against me. Okay, this is what's going to happen, man. On, on, God, this is 100% guaranteed to happen. On your walk with Christ, 100%, 100% is going to happen to you because the Bible says that the servant is not better than the master. Okay, so always understand, they did it to Christ. They betrayed him. They, they backstabbed him, a so-called friend who he trusted. So there's going to be people in your life who you trust, you know, people who you break bread with, someone who you will never, someone who you see want to win and someone who wants to see get to the next level, they're going to betray you. This is going to happen. It's going to, it's all part of God's plan. Okay. It is all a part of God's plan. So it's going to happen to your life too, guys. Expect it. They hit it, but you see, you'll have discernment. And you see, before Judas did what he did, before Peter did what he did, okay, God gave Jesus the discernment to see, to see what's going to happen before it took place. You don't think God won't do the same thing to you? Guys, there's a lot of people who I know who I know are going to betray me down the line. God's already showed me, but it is what it is. It's all part of the plan. You know, so, and this, this is wisdom. This is knowledge. I don't get mad. I don't get sad. It's all part of the plan. It's, man, I'm, man, I'm telling y'all. Let me tell y'all something, bro. It's a lot of people who I know down the line in the future. Now, some people might say, oh, Mark, you're just being negative. No, this is things that God has showed me. There's a lot of people who I know in, in, in down the line in the future. They're going to betray me when I get to the next level in life. Okay. And then, you know, it, it's, it, but see, I'm going to remember it. Judas and Jesus, same thing all over again. Same thing all over again. And I'm going to remember the Bible verse. It says that the servant is not better than the master. So everything they did to him, they're going to do to you too. Okay. Someone said the truth isn't always positive. Yeah, that's true. It's trust no one. Facts. Don't look back. Yep. It happened to me. Let me read that comment. It says, uh, I, uh, Asia says, it happened to me time to time over. At first it really hurt, but now I pray on it and trust when God's removing people out of my life. He knows all. And in comparison, I know nothing. Yeah, that's true. Someone says, not negative, just reality, facts. Honestly, they never broke my heart or nothing like that. New level, yeah, new levels, new devils, yep. The person closest to you is your hater, hater on their job, yeah, yep. All my trust always is for the most high, but I still will always go out my way for others when they are in need. I do not ever expect anything in return, never. And see, who said that? A truth will set you free. That's why I know you're blessed, bro. That's why, that's why I know you're blessed when you just, you know, let me reread that again, because this is this is facts. Okay, it says, all my trust is in the most high, but I will still go out of my way for others when they when they are in need. I do not expect anything in return, never. Exactly. Okay. It was the same thing, guys, when people let uh when I have to send, you know, people need to borrow money or when people need favors. I don't expect I don't expect them to pay me back. I really don't. I don't expect them to give me anything in return. You know, even though of course I would want it, because someone if someone would tell you, hey, you know, can I, can I borrow something? I don't expect it back. I don't expect that what what I could do for someone, someone could do back to me. You guys, when you give to someone, don't even expect it back. Just, just you know, because I always understand that in life, you've reaped what you sow. So when you're doing good, when you're helping people, you might not get help from that person, but God Almighty is going to help you. <laughs> this is how it works. This is how it works. So always keep that in mind. Okay, God Almighty is going to help you. If no one wants to help you, the Most High is going to put his hand in your life and take you to the next level. And it won't, there won't be no devil, there won't be no deceiver that's going to stop that. Okay, people will hate that you can see. Yeah, uh, Chantel, that's true. Just like in the movie They Live, when that the main character, Petey Piper or whatever, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Uh, he was able to see it and they hated him for it. So when you can see the demons in people, because best believe they know. The spirits that are working through, that are operating through people, when you can see the spirits working through, they know. And that's why they get triggered. They get bothered. 
And that's why, guys, I just say to myself, <laughs> in Babylon, guys, a lot of people have unclean spirits, man. A lot of people. Okay? Uh, so it's just best to say, you know, say to yourself, now, of course, I'm not saying you can't be a part of the com a like-minded community. I'm not saying that you can't have, you know, brothers, sisters, friends, and a wife, husband, children, whatever, all that, right? Uh, but, you know, just to preserve your spirit, to protect your energy, to protect your spirit, you really just don't want to really be out there like that, man. You want to just stay low-key. That's how I am. Staying low-key. I've been like that for years. And it, it brings great peace because I remember when I was of this world, I hated staying by myself. I couldn't stay by myself for a day. I don't think there was a day where I stayed to myself. I was always hanging out with somebody every single day for years. Okay, when I started walking the straight and narrow path, bro, I can't, I can't imagine me living a life like, like that no more. Bro, I'm gonna stay home. I got, I got my PS5. You know, I got everything. I, I got everything I need in my house, bro. I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling, man. So yeah. So you're gonna be able to detect, guys. The secret motives, the hidden agendas, you'll be able to spot it. And like I said, guys, I, I don't want to be the, the bearer of bad news. I, I don't like always saying, you know, I like to say some positive stuff too, but you have to expect betrayal by those who you love, okay? They did it to Christ, they're going to do it to you too. So expect that betrayal, it's going to happen to you, man. Someone who you break bread with, someone who you will never expect. You'll never expect that, okay? And also, God will show you who's going to betray you Years in advance, bro. I already see it. I already see it. It's a matrix. It's a matrix. And I just laugh because it's like, dang. Like, Satan is really working through the weak vessels, man. He's really working through them. Okay, number five. Or is it number five? Yeah, number five is. Okay, this is good. Uh, number, uh, also, guys, we got we got a thousand people in here. We only have 700 likes. So if you're just not joining, make sure you all smash the like button, man. I'm also going to be doing more live streams as well. I was going to make this a video format, but I want to, you know, connect with you guys in the comment section. You guys be keeping it lit. So I'm going to start making more live streams too as well. Back in the days, I will make more live streams, but um, uh, I kind of switched it, but I'm going to start going back to the live streams too. Someone says, why does, why does people stare at me or talk about me knowing that I'm right in front of them? I don't know. Watch Woman for Jesus Christ says, shoot your feet with the gospel of peace. Yep. Chantel Shalom, what's up? What up, what up? It's worse during the holidays, yeah. These holidays, I hate this time of year, man. This is the pagan pagan season. All right, so number five is... Also, do you guys... <laughs> I know this is kind of random, but... Um, for those who are set apart, those who are truly set apart, do you guys still have friends and family still hit you up around this time of year for like Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all those type of events? Let me know. Let me know, guys. <laughs> Even though you already told them, right? Even though you already told them years and years and years, but they're still like, you know, maybe maybe some people think that you're not, maybe, maybe some people think that we're like, this is like temporary because like I said, guys, many people who were of this world, they knew the truth, but they went back. So many people, there's probably a time period when they stopped celebrating Thanksgiving. They stopped celebrating Halloween and Christmas, but they went back into the world, you know? So maybe some people think it's just like a, a like a phase or something like that, you know? Uh, someone says nobody texts. That's good. You don't want nobody to text you uh, when it comes to pagan holidays. So that's definitely good. Absolutely. I just went through LOL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Florence, for becoming a member. Not anymore. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's good. Um, uh, this war. Oops. Okay, number five is no longer of this world, and you're going to have no desire to fit in. Okay. Because you understand that God has not called you to fit in with this world. He has called us to be set apart, to stand out. Okay, so when you're no longer uh, of this world, your eyes start to open up. You no longer are blind and deceived like the rest of these people. Okay, so and this, like I said, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Okay, it says, the world, the world is passing, uh, passing away. All that is in this world... It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, okay? So when you're operating in those three things, and also when you have the love of the world in you, okay, it's going to be very hard to have discernment. It's going to be very, very hard for you to have discernment, guys, when you are desiring to fit in, when you're desiring to be of this world, 
when you're still in love with the things of this world. It's going to be very hard for you to, to fit in. Okay, it's going to be very hard. Or sorry, it's going to be very hard for you to gain discernment. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Actually, let's actually read that verse real quick. Um, like I said, guys, the church didn't. I don't remember the church ever going over this verse back when I used to go to uh, the church and all that. And let me make this very clear too, because a lot of people are just so confused. The church is a is a body, guys. It's not a building. A lot of people are still in this matrix, so they look at things carnally. Okay, the church is a, is a body, but when I talk about church, I'm talking about like the you know the church on Sundays and stuff like that. <laughs> Anyways, all right, one John chapter two verse fifteen says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in, uh, in the world." So neither the things that are in the world. Now, when people hear this type of stuff, they think that oh, you can't you can't own things. Like no, it just means that you're not putting that above God. That's all that it means. Okay, so love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wow, this verse should cut deep. You know, there's a Bible verse in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says that the word of God cuts deep. This verse cuts. It should cut a lot of people, okay? If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world pass away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. Okay, so he that does the will of God abides forever. Okay, we know what the will of God is according to Matthew chapter 19, verse 15 to 21, keeping God's commandments, keeping the faith in Christ. So we know that's God's will. Okay, so, and that's also, guys, I, I, I actually would go to number seven. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want us to go too fast. I don't want to go too fast. All right, but yes, guys, so if you want to increase your discernment, just come out from, come out from the world, man. Come out from among them. Stop being unequally yoked with individuals. And when people see that verse, they, they always just think this is about our relationships. No, it's about the people around you. It don't always got to be a relationship, okay? Someone says, Mark, my mom is making me celebrate pagan holidays. Uh, well, it depends. Are you under 18? If you're under 18, you know, you're under your parents, you know. You're under your parents, so I can't really say anything about that. What's up, Kevin Helps? I, I could have, I think I'd be making you mods, bro. I thought I already made you a mod, Kevin. All right, I made you a mod again. Uh, someone says, why are people not celebrating Christmas? I'm so confused. Uh, check out my videos, man. I have many videos on uh, on uh, Satan's holidays, man. Christmas, a lot of people, they want to mix Christmas in, in Christ. Oh, man, Satan is such a deceiver, man. I got to give I gotta give him that. You know, there's, there's a Bible verse that says to be wise as a serpent. Okay, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. That's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. You know, Satan used his... his with, even though he, he used wisdom, but to be evil, okay, to deceive Eve, okay, you don't think that's not happening in the world today with these with these holidays, these so-called holidays? Nowhere in the Bible does God say to, to get a Christmas tree and to deck it out with ornaments. It actually says to do the opposite. That's in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 6, okay? Um, it was actually Nimrod's birthday. It wasn't Christ's birthday. Christmas was not the day where Christ was born. I don't know why, who, who came up with this? Guys, who came? Like, I want to know. Let me before I go with number six. Who who came up with Christmas being Christ's birthday? I just want to know something, man. Like, who came up with this? There's no way in the Bible. You know, I, I don't. This video wasn't even supposed to be about it, but since we're talking about it, it's just so much confusion in this world, guys. There's no verse that shows where, where, the day that Jesus was burnt, uh, born. Okay, someone said the Romans. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do not follow. Yes, exactly. The traditions of the world. That's the guys. Christmas, all these pagan holidays. It's all traditions of man. Okay. Someone says, who cares? No, this is important, man. This is definitely important. Yeah, the Catholics. Yep, the Catholics started it. All right, someone uh, left a good Bible verse. I'm going to read that. Okay. Uh, that's New King James Version. We only deal with the KJV, but I'll read it anyways. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 4 says, Thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. Actually, I'm going to actually read the whole verse. Because I know that YouTube, you're going to put like 100 characters or 200. So I'm, I'm going to read it real quick. I'm going to read this. This is in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. Okay, so it says, Thus said the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay, for the customs of the people are vain. For one uh, cutteth a tree of the forest, the work of the the work of hands of the worksmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that they move not. 
Okay, they are upright as a palm tree, but they speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also it is in them to do good. Okay, well, doesn't the Bible talk about, for one, get a tree from the forest and duck it, deck it with ornaments? That was, a, that was a, a custom of the pagans, guys, back then. What are we seeing to now, uh, right now? Across the street, there's like a huge place to buy Christmas trees, and they sell ornaments, and they deck it out with gold. Well, doesn't the Bible verse just say not to do that? You know, like I said, I'm not even, I wasn't even supposed to talk about this, but I mean, you know, um, the comment section be lit. So and it's all good, though. You know, like I said, guys, there was a time where I was, I used to celebrate Christmas. I had no idea that it was pagan. I used to celebrate all, all of the uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, the day of the slaughter of the uh, Native Americans. <laughs> and we're all just eating it. And, you know, this is crazy, man. I mean, I look back, guys. I'm just like, God, thank you for opening my eyes, man. Even though it does come with sorrow. Okay, even though it does come with grief, I, I, I'd rather, I, I'd rather like, think about it, guys. Would you rather live a lie or to live in truth? Even though when, it, when, it, when, it, when you're living in truth and following truth, it's sorrow, it's, it's, it's grief. But I don't want to live a lie no more. That's just foolishness. That's, to me, that's folly. Okay, remove the scales from our, our eyes. Yep, exactly. Someone said, like, like the video. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. But people need to know the truth. Yeah. Someone says, the Catholic religion was the one who started that. His birth was on Christmas when it was actually their son, God's birth, and they tried to mix it in. Yeah, the Roman Catholics definitely started all this uh, pagan madness. That's that's the fact. Yep. Uh, was Jesus born on, in April? No one knows when he was born. Um if, if God wanted us to know the day he was born, it would be in the scriptures, guys. That is how I see it. And it's not in the scriptures. Um, but yeah, someone says, uh, Kevin says, Mark, the messenger, I fell short celebrating Thanksgiving, but I am not celebrating Christmas this year. It's all good, man. You're, you're so young, bro. It's all good, man. We don't put anybody down for nothing. You know, I'm just here, guys. I'm just a messenger. Let me make this very clear, too. People sometimes can feel like I'm judging them. I talk about these pagan holidays and or certain sins and stuff like that. Guys, that's your life. Uh, what does that have to do with me? You know, I'm just a messenger. God instructing me to warn you guys, and that's it. Whatever you want to do with the with the message, with the information, then that's on you. Okay. Um, I I judge righteously, as in, and also I, the spiritual man judges all things. So I'm able to judge with the discernment around me what's taking place, and also the people who come my way. You know, I, I'm able to judge. Okay, this person for me or not? You know, that person is living in sin. That has nothing to do. I don't judge that person to put them down. I don't care. That's their life. You know, only religious people like to condemn and cast stones at other people. Guys, what's the point of doing that? That's a waste of waste of life, waste of energy. Okay, well, what another person does with their life has nothing to do with me. As long as it doesn't affect my family, you know, like only religious spirits they like to do that stuff. I don't, I don't, really, I don't really care about that, man. Honestly, you live your life. Okay, I'm only the messenger. All right, putting it out there. All right, so number five, no longer of this world, no desire to fit in. Okay, number six. I was talking about this earlier, okay? You are, and this is very important too. This could have been number one, actually. Okay, so number six is you are able to discern God's plan slash will in your life. Okay, this is, I mean, this seems like it's very easy and simple, but it's very, very impactful, okay? So when you're able to discern what God's plan is in your life, right? So, for instance, God's plan in my life was to raise a family, get married, um, you know, and have children. That's God's plan. So I was able to discern that, you know, because before I got married, what was I doing? Sleeping around, messing around, you know, just wasting my life away, okay? And I wasn't following God's plan in my life. You know, thankfully... You know, also watching corn and touching myself and doing, you know, the abominable things, you know, just wasting time, wasting energy. OK, but when I was able to when God, you know, gave me the wisdom and knowledge, he put me on semen retention. You know, I didn't even know what that was back then. You know, and not only did he put me on that, how he put me on that, he put people around me that would tell me they didn't tell me exactly what semen retention was. But some guy told me and this guy wasn't religious at all. He was just a normal dude. And he told me, he was like, yeah, I haven't watched corn in seven years. All my, all the friends that I had around me, they were doing that every day. Or at least like they were, you know, watching that. But he was the one set apart person, you know, one random dude. Tell me, oh yeah, I haven't watched that in seven years. 
And I would always see this guy get all the females. I'm like, what, what, what's the seeker? And everyone's like, oh, he told me to stop watching that. And I stopped doing that. I started gaining like a lot of, I started gaining like the benefits. I started feeling like a man again, bro. <laughs> because when you're watching corn, you're literally just destroying yourself as a man, man. Like that's just like spiritual death. Really, man, spiritual death. And you don't feel like a man no more. You're like cucking yourself. So um, my advice for all you guys who struggle with that, I'm telling you guys, break free. Break free the chains, man. Because uh, the minute you break free, it's just like, well, I haven't watched that stuff. It's almost been six years. I, I look back, I'm like, why did I even do that? That's embarrassing. It's even embarrassing to, it's embarrassing to talk about, but it's just a testimony. You know, it's very embarrassing to talk about, but like I said, just a testimony. And, uh, you know, it's strongholds that keep people in bondage to watching corn. It's strongholds that keep people in bondage to their, you know, to their lust, the lust of the flesh. It's just strongholds. You got to break free from that. Fasting and praying. Giving your life, your life to the most high. Stop playing church. Stop being lukewarm. Stop being, stop being carnal. Okay. And, uh, you know, break free from the bondage, man. Cry out to the most high. Get on your knees and pray. Humble yourself. He'll give you the strength. Okay. He'll give you the instruction. Um. Uh, you know, it's easy, it's easy to say, okay, just read your Bible. And I'm not saying, you know, you should read your Bible. But are you really seeking a relationship with the Most High? Or are you just being religious? Okay, so it's very important. Having a relationship with Him, He will instruct you. Just like how, is a, how a father instructs her children on what to do. How to, how to be a better, you know, a better human. Okay, you don't think God doesn't do the same thing to His, his sons and daughters? Okay, so someone says approaching seven months. That's what's up, man. Keep going, bro. Keep going. Okay, I can discern what God's will is. That's what's up, man. God's will also in my life, God's, God's plan, God's will was to uh, preach on YouTube. When I first, before I even got, when I, when I got first called me, right, my actual plan was to sell my phone, sell all my laptops and just go ghost from society. Like, that was, that was my plan. Uh, but that wasn't God's plan in my life. You know, even though that was my plan to be low key, you know, I wasn't trying to be seen. I wasn't, I didn't care about clout or anything like that. I was gone with this world. Once I, once God opened my eyes, bro, I was like, this world is so fake. It is so fake. I didn't plan on being a preacher. I didn't plan on being a messenger. What? That wasn't, that wasn't my plan in my life, but that was God's plan for my life. I was able to discern that. Got on YouTube, made a couple of videos. The videos went viral, bro. I had no subscribers. I just started YouTube channel. All my videos just go viral, you know, but then it kind of slowed down. Even though it slowed down, you know, I was still, do, I was still, you know, be making videos. I didn't make a single dollar making videos for what, three years on YouTube. Um, it was just what God put into me. And then eventually, you know, consistency, uh, seeking God's kingdom daily is righteousness. And, uh, you know, God started to give me the increase. Okay. Um, I didn't know this was my, I didn't know this was God. I mean, if you would have told the friends around me, they probably would have laughed. I would laugh with them. Like, oh, Mark, you're going to be on YouTube preaching the Bible? I'm like, what? Nah. You know, but that's just, that's just how it is, man. But yeah, once you see the world is fake, guys, you're going to have no desire to fit in. It's, for what? For, it's just a waste of time. Someone says, what is corn? Replace C with the with P. I gotta speak in code. Got I gotta speak in code. Yeah, replace the C with corn and put P in, in front of it. That's what I gotta say. All right, so I was able to discern God's will. And you will too, guys, when you have discernment. You're able to discern God's plan and will in your life. Okay, and what does this come with? It comes with. Uh, let me see where I can put that at. Put it right here. Comes with great peace, man. Comes with great peace. Let me read that verse for y'all. This is in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Okay, when you're when you're doing God's plan in your life, when you're when you're doing God's will, his plan in your life, this is what happens, guys. Okay, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Okay, so God will keep you in perfect peace, no matter if you're in a storm. Okay, no matter what's happening in your life, okay, whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Even Job, right? Even though the hell he was facing, getting attacked by the devil, his friends, his wife told him to curse God, and everyone's everything is going crazy in his life. I guarantee you guys, even though he was going through all that, he still had trust in God, so God kept him in peace. I guarantee you, bro, guarantee you. All the hell he was facing, he still never betrayed God. So God gave him peace, even through the storm. And it was just a test, anyways, because I believe he got twice of what he had before. So God bless him with double. Okay. People say double for your trouble. I don't know about all that, but hey, God bless him with double. So I guarantee you, bro, even Jesus, when he went through, he, what he went through, he went through. I'm sure he was in perfect peace. Okay. So.
So, and now I know there's, there's a, there is a Bible verse that says time for war and a time for peace. I understand that. But when you're, when you're putting your trust in him, guys, it's always, it's always a blessing that comes with it. Always a blessing that comes with it, man. So always keep that in mind. No matter what you're going through in your life, guys, this is why it's so important to meditate, to meditate on the word of God. Okay. So whenever you're, you're, you're seeking peace, guys, remember uh, Isaiah chapter 26, verse three, man, write it down in your notepad, R write it down somewhere, man. Facts, facts, facts. Okay, so number seven, the last one, which correlates to number two, If you guys can too as well, if you haven't already, get the likes up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. So you will be more in tune with the Holy Spirit. And number seven is pretty funny. Let me I'll explain it a little bit. Okay, so number seven is you will be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and you have the signs to what's to come. Okay. And the reason why I say it's funny because the signs of what's to come, my YouTube channel blew up because of the signs. I always would, I would always look for signs that God will give me. Okay, there's a Bible verse in Matthew chapter 16, verse 4. It says, um, a wicked generation seek after a sign and no sign shall be given to them. Okay, now that's because they're wicked. So when the wicked are looking for signs, God won't give them any signs. Okay, but when you're righteous, when you're the opposite of that and you're seeking out a sign, because you want to know God's plan in your life, right? You want to know God's will in your life, then the sign will come. Then God will give you the sign, okay? Whether it's in, your, in a dream, in a vision, so, or someone, someone God uses to speak to you, all those things, okay? So you're going to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when, you, when, you, you, when your discernment increases, guys, you're just more in tune, okay? You're, you're, you're unplugged of this, of this world, right? You're unplugged of the world, and you're just more plugged into the Holy Spirit, more tapped into your scriptures, and God will bless you with the signs to come, man. I'm telling y'all, all the signs, okay? That's crazy, guys. Isn't that crazy? My YouTube channel blew up because I made videos on signs. And it's like, God bless me. From now, I, now I'm able to give you guys the signs to come, okay? All, and now, of course, it's, there's, there's, I just put seven because all, it's all fits in my whiteboard. Um, and I, I don't put, a lot of people think I put seven because it's like a godly number or something like that. It's really just because it's all it fits in my whiteboard, as you guys can clearly see. I can't make a number eight because it takes up too much space. But uh, there's hundreds of signs, bro. There's a lot of signs that God, um, that God will give you. Okay, so someone says uh, the words are not clear. Yeah, my spelling is not good, man. Uh, or like my uh, the way I spell things is not. It's not the best. But I'll read over you guys for right now. Okay, so these are the seven signs God has blessed you with the sermon. Number one is that you will have an increase of knowledge and wisdom. Okay, it talks about this in Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse 17 to 18. You're gonna gain sorrow and grief. Okay, more knowledge, more wisdom. That's what comes with having discernment. And, but I did give you guys the blessings that comes with it, even though you're gonna experience negative emotions because you're, you're able to see that, you're able to see things that nobody else will see. So it's like very, it's like you're gonna feel sorrow from it, okay? Number two is you're able to set something wrong before anybody else. Things that are happening in the world that's, you know, an agenda from Satan. There's many guys, many agendas from the devil in these last days. And you're going to be able to see it before anybody else sees it, okay? People call it today the woke agendas. I don't like how they use the word woke because woke back in the days was people who were actually awake. But now that word is like demonized. So I don't like to say that I'm woke no more because people would assume like, oh, you're LG, and all that type of stuff. All right? Someone said they're on the sorrow stage. Okay, that's what's up. But see, that's that's the good thing that you know that you, you know that you're on that stage. And guys, I guys, when God is increasing my discernment, when He's increasing my my knowledge and wisdom, I experienced this too. Maybe a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple days ago. This is something that you're gonna experience many times, guys. When God is increasing you, okay. And, and in order for God to increase in you, you must decrease. Talked about that in John chapter three verse thirty. Okay. Uh, number two. Oh, no, actually, number two. Number three is as you continue to walk with God your spiritual gifts will increase, okay? And that comes with obedience. That comes with being humble, okay? Being meek. All right, so obedience, being humble. And like I said, guys, you must increase and he must, oh, sorry. Sorry, I put you. Oh, let me say that wrong. 
He must increase and you must decrease. My fault, okay? Number four, when people have secret motives and hidden agendas, you'll easily be able to spot it. On this narrow path, guys, you're going to have people, you're going to have people who are going to betray you. Okay, that's just a part of the West. That's what happens, part of the matrix, okay? It's gonna happen. All right, number five is you're no longer of this world and you have no desire to fit in it, okay? Number six is you're able to discern God's plan and will in your life. This is so important. This is so, so, so important, okay? Because a lot of people are confused of what God's will and God's plan in your life. I mean, you could just read this verse. Let me read this one real quick. Uh, this is in uh, Romans. Romans, uh, which one? Hmm. Is it in this one? Hopefully I'm right. Okay, yeah. Romans chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Okay, so the renewal of your mind. Okay, renewing your mind. This is something that, guys, you got to be doing daily, every day. Okay, so that's in Romans chapter. I don't know if I could fit that in here. Um, I got to, like, squeeze it down here. Dang. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. Oh, my goodness. Might be time to, I'd be saying that a lot. I know, I got to get a bigger whiteboard, man. But, yeah, so that's number six. This is very important, guys. You got to be able to discern God's plan and God's will in your life. Very important. Number seven is you will be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and you'll have the signs of what's to come, okay? But this is very important too because you won't be deceived. When everybody else is deceived, like it seems like the herd, the masses of people, they're always led to the wrong path. They're always led to doing the opposite of what God has for them, okay? You want them to be doing the opposite. Whatever the herd is doing, always do the opposite. That's how you're gonna be safe and preserved, okay? So you'll be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and you'll have the signs of what's to come, okay? So that's the seven signs God has blessed you with discernment, man. Someone says, Mark, before you go, we need a woo. I haven't did a woo in a long time. It's because I'm not in that season right now. Not in that season. There'll be a season, though, you'll, you'll see me wooing a lot. No, I'm not in that season. <laughs> I'm not in that season right now, man. So we got a, we got almost 1,100 people in here. We got the same likes and match it up. Wow, blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you so much. Five says, thank you for making these videos. I like how you could specify, memorize certain Bible verses. I hope and pray that God continues to help you grow and strengthen you. Thank you so much, Vibes. Yeah, this is all just for the ministry, man. You know, now, of course, I had to put in the work. I had to read the Bible many times from front to back. But, uh, yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. God bless you. A New Age Media says, Satan and his minions doesn't want you to inherit blessings. Yeah, that's facts. Your eight-hour meditation video helped me know what verses you were going to say. Okay. I, I definitely got to do um, uh, more of those meditation videos. Got to do more of that in the future. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Yeah. Evil doesn't want you to know how to live. You must apply the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yep, yep. The video isn't blurred for me. Yeah, I don't know what that person's saying. Maybe it's her Wi-Fi. She keeps leaving the same comments. So I don't I don't get it. Anyways. All right. I think I read all the comments. Obviously, I couldn't read exactly everyone. Um... But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you all. These are the seven signs God has blessed you with a sermon. If you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, share the video, comment below, uh, like the video too, all that. Love you guys so much. God bless you. Peace.